Great mayors and members of the council, it's great to be back. Uh, as you are all familiar, each year the city does a survey and you use that survey to really assess how well you're delivering services. So it's my pleasure to come back to this great city. I have to tell you, every time I come here, it's a breath of fresh air because most of the communities I go to around the country, frankly, are having real challenges. The economic difficulties and everything else has made it hard for cities to meet resident expectations. And I know even you had to make some decisions about raising taxes this year. So you're gonna get your feedback tonight about the impact that that had, what people think about the city as a result and the overall perception of the direction the city's headed. Uh, if you're not familiar with our firm, ETC Institute, we specialize in helping local governments get input from their residents. Over the last five years, we've surveyed over one and a half million people in 48 states. This map just shows uh, kind of the locations of the places that we've conducted surveys. Uh, we also do national and regional surveys, so I'm going to talk a lot in context about what's happening in other places around the country to give you a sense for how Auburn compares and how trends here compare <coughs> to the rest of the country, and that's the basis uh, for those comments. As far as tonight, I'm going to stop uh, and just briefly recap the purpose and methodology. I know you ultimately have to make decisions with this information, so I want you to be comfortable in the way it was gathered. I'm then going to highlight our conclusions up front, walk about the process for getting there, and then I'll summarize. And if you have any questions, we'd be happy uh, to take them from you. As far as the overall purpose, each year the city conducts a survey to give you an objective assessment. Uh, for assessing how well you deliver services. I know you also use it to help set budget priorities, see how you trend over time, and frankly just to assess overall what the results mean. How do you compare to other communities? And as I have said in past years, you set the standard, and as you'll see this year, you continue to do so. The way the surveys is conducted is each year we select 1,500 households at random from all the households in the city. Uh, we mail them a survey and then we give people to participate uh, by phone if they don't send it back in the mail. Each year we try to get about 600 respondents. This year we had 607. And the distribution of the respondents generally mirrors the population of the city with regard to geographic location and other demographic factors like race, gender, and so forth. The results aren't perfect. Uh, they have a margin of error about plus or minus 4%. So if you see changes of more than 5%, those are potentially statistically significant. Uh, but all in all, it's been done the same way now for the past seven years. So it gives you a pretty consistent assessment of how well the city's doing. Just to give you a couple examples, uh, one of the things that we do monitor is race and ethnicity. Uh, we compare the results of the survey to the census, and it's not perfect, but you can see the distribution generally reflects the city's population. In addition, there's other variables like income, gender, and other factors that we monitor. And if you look at the composition of this year's survey, it's very similar to previous surveys. And the reason we look at that is we don't want changes in the composition of the sample to then affect the results. And so by having a fairly consistent sample from one year to the next, we can look at the results as being reflections of real changes in perceptions, not just changes in the types of people who respond. In addition, we geocode the home address of the respondents so we can actually create maps that show how people in different parts of the city rate different services. This map just shows the general location of where the respondents live. It's not perfect distribution, but it's generally allocated in proportion to the city's actual population. So where more people are living, you have more dots. Where there's fewer people living, you have fewer dots. And I'll show you a few maps later on in the presentation, and there's also many more in the full report, but I ask people to use caution in the interpretation of the maps because you might just have three or four people from a certain area. So it might give you an indication whether or not you're doing well, but you should use the information from other sources in addition to the maps to make a final determination about service delivery. So with that said, these are my major conclusions for this year's survey. As you'll see, the city of Auburn continues to move in the right direction. I know you made some tough decisions, but the overall results, particularly when you look at the long-term trend, show that you're setting a standard for service delivery. A few other things. One of the things that we did is we developed a composite satisfaction index for the very first time this year. It takes a look at all of the items that are assessed in the survey and how they've compared to the first year we started tracking the survey with these set of questions back in 2006. And your overall composite index is up 10 points 
But during that same period, the similar ratings nationwide have dropped five points. So your relative position compared to the net rest of the country over the last six years is actually up 15 points, which is very, very impressive. And although there are some decreases this year, most of the decreases we see in the survey mirror what's happened nationwide. So though you see the results down in a few areas, I think you'll be surprised that the overall results remain very high and you can continue to set the standard uh, for other communities. First major find I want to share with you, which I think isn't a surprise, you'll be familiar with this, but just that the overall perception of the city continues to be very, very good. Uh, we have a number of key indicators that we use to assess the health of the city, things such as the image, perceptions of the quality of life, and so forth. And we ask people to rate questions each year on a scale of one to five. Fours and fives are positive ratings, one and twos are negative ratings, and a rating of three we classify as a neutral, but it really it's an okay rating. It means people typically haven't had a real good experience or a bad experience. When you look at many of these charts in the report, you'll notice the predominance of the color blue, people giving very good ratings. What stands out to me, though, even more so is the amount of people that give ratings of five on a five-point scale. For example, if you look at the overall quality of city services, one in three people gives the very best rating. It's an intensely uh, strong perception of positive uh, satisfaction with city services. Altogether, 84% of the people surveyed gave positive ratings. Only 3% were dissatisfied. Chances are you'll hear from the 3% and not from the 30% who are very satisfied. So for every person that complains about the overall quality of city services, there are actually 10 people out there that give very positive ratings and a total 84% that think you're doing a good job. In addition, I know you made some challenges and decisions about taxes and what the implications of that would be. Uh, you take a look at these results, only 7% of residents are dissatisfied with the value they get for their taxes. 25% give ratings of five, so a three and a half to one ratio. And if you combine the very satisfied and satisfied, you have 72% of the respondents giving you positive ratings. So you're definitely doing something right uh, in the public's eyes with how well you're being stew or good stewards of their resources. In addition, when people look at the city as a place to live, as a work, and as a place to raise children, you'll see as a place to work has the lower ratings, but I'm going to show you in a little bit that Auburn actually compared to other places is one of the best places to work in the nation. There's very little negativity in any of these areas as well. So the overall health of the city remains very strong. When we look at some of the specific services that were assessed, we start out on the survey and we ask people to rate major categories of services. And you can see schools, uh, public safety services, libraries, parks and recreation. I won't read the entire list to you, but you'll see that only one of the items on the list has dissatisfaction ratings of more than 20%. That's traffic flow. But what's interesting is most communities around the country that are desirable, where people want to be, the number one issue that they have problems with is traffic flow. It's the nature of being an attractive, desirable community is you have cars and people wanting to come there. And so I think that's probably gonna perpetually be an issue for you. So I do, even though the dissatisfaction is at 21%, you have two and a half times that many people actually give positive ratings uh, for your performance in that area. Special hats off to the schools, uh, your public safety and life Library. Those three services all have more than 40% of the respondents giving ratings of five on a five-point scale. The brand, what we call brand equity within those services is extremely strong, which means that they're doing something above and beyond the call that most people expect with regard to the service delivery in those areas. In addition, parks and recreation is at 30%. Customer service has 80% of the folks giving positive ratings, and even your communication, which is one of the lowest rated services in most cities, only has 5% dissatisfaction. In addition, we wanted to take a look at not just the overall ratings, but one challenge that potentially always exists is are you doing a good job citywide? You know, in other words, you might have three-fourths of the city give really good ratings and then one part of the city give mediocre ratings and it could be misleading when you look at the overall results. So what I did is I mapped the overall results to the question, how satisfied are you with the overall quality of city services? And what we've done is we've shaded census block groups within the city, and those are areas that are a little bigger than a, a neighborhood, but smaller than a zip code. And we shaded them by the mean rating given by the respondents who live there. What's very unusual to, on this question is to have an entire city in the color blue. That means that regardless of where you live, 
the average person is giving you a positive response. In this case, the entire city is either in blue or dark blue. So you're doing an exceptionally good job. I know the next question will be, what do we get the rest of the city to be in dark blue? But I can tell you from my experience, it's very rare just to be in light blue. Most communities have pockets of neutral, which you don't have any, which is kind of the off-white, or they have things that are in orange or red. So you're definitely doing something right with regard to making sure that residents, regardless of the, where they live, think they're getting good quality services. The third major thing I want to share with you is generally the trends. And the Composite Satisfaction Index is a new tool we've added this year that's going to let you actually track, continue to track your performance into the future compared to your base year. What we did is we looked at all the critical services that were assessed in 2006, and we essentially added up those ratings. And we did that again in 2012. And then we set 2006 to 100, and then 2012 is relative to what it was in 2006. And you'll see you're up 10 points from 2006. For that same set of services, the national average has actually dropped five points. So as I said up front, your relative position to the nation's actually improved 15 points. So you've started off as a great performer the first time they came out here. You've gotten even better over the past few years while the national average has actually dropped. Some of the specific things that we've taken a look at in the survey, you can see the image, quality of city service, appearance of city, and overall value. If you look at the long term, which shows the orange to the blue, is pretty uh, impressive in all areas. You can see there were some decreases from 2011 to 2012. Most of them were not statistically significant. And last year, you had an unusual anomaly in that you won a national championship at the same time, literally a couple of weeks before we did the survey. Things like that can make communities feel a little, bitter, a little better about themselves. So the real trend, if we look from 2010 to 2012, actually is still very positive in most areas. You just had a little spike last year, I think, as a result of that. In addition, what you'll see is the overall value for city taxes is even though you raise taxes, and I know that was a challenging decision, people are still more satisfied today than they were in 2006. And I would expect that typically what happens is when you make that kind of decision, you get the lowest rating immediately afterwards, and then people tend to recover because they get used to the new level. So the fact that your new low only drops 6% is very impressive. And the overall quality of city services at 84% is 7% above where it was back in 2006, and pretty much has stayed the same compared to a year ago. When it comes to perceptions of the community, you can see as a place to work, live, and wait, raise children have stayed about the same. The overall results for the city as a place to work have dropped slightly, but it's consistent to what we've seen nationally. In fact, when I show you in a little bit, you'll see that Auburn actually now compares much better than the nation. In fact, uh, Auburn's drop of 4%, or really when you go back to 2006, of just 1%, while the nation has seen drops as 10 to 15%, depending on what part of the country you're in. When it comes to some of the major city services that were assessed, you can see they're somewhat mixed this year. Few areas have gone up a little bit compared to 2011. Others have dropped a little bit. The overall changes from 2011 to 2012 aren't that significant. But when you look at the five-year or six-year trend going back to 2006, you can see all but two services have seen statistically significant improvement. In one of the areas that's been the most important service or the concern that residents have cared about the most the last couple surveys is traffic flow. And you can see that's up 11 points uh, since 2006. In addition, the other area that really impressed me is city communication because that's one of the areas that particularly is important if you're going to set expectations or if you're going to be doing differences uh, in the way you deliver services or when it comes to taxes, if you're going to make changes, is keeping people informed of what's going on. And you can see the overall satisfaction with communication is up 15 points, stayed pretty much where it was a year ago, even though you did have some changes in your tax structure. So the city's doing a very, very good job. When you look at some of the specific areas within some of those major categories, this chart shows you how public safety service ratings have changed. What you notice on here is just about every service has improved significantly compared to 2006. Seen a couple drops slightly from a year ago. You'll see the enforcement of traffic laws is down six points and the overall perceptions of animal control are down seven points. But beyond those, most of the other changes aren't statistically significant compared to the one-year trend. 
But if you look at the six-year trend, on the other hand, enforcement of speed limits in neighborhoods, which at one time was a major concern to residents, has gone from 38% to 58% over the last six, or last six years, a 20% improvement. And you can see most of the other areas on the survey uh, have improved significantly, many of which are up double digits uh, compared to six years ago. When you look at perceptions of safety, similar information that we see in some of the other services, some slight decreases from one year ago. Most of the decreases aren't statistically significant, but the long-term trend, particularly the overall feeling of safety in the city, is up since 2006. In addition, when we looked at code enforcement, this is the one area on the survey where the results generally are lower, uh, kind of across the board, and some of the drops are statistically significant. Uh, you can see unrelated occupancy regulations, zoning regulations, building codes are all seeing significant decreases from 2011. Uh, although those areas have decreased, perceptions of the cleanup of litter and debris actually went up a little bit. Not statistically significant improvement, but that was one of the top priorities in last year's survey. So what's interesting is the things that people care a lot about, you continue to do a pretty good job at providing. When we looked at your utility and environmental services, when I first presented this to you back in 2006, at the time I told you you probably weren't going to get a lot higher in this area because it's very unusual to get a lot of numbers above 70% in utility services. And you can see back in 2006, you were at 71% or higher in each of the utility services. If you look at where you are today and even last year, you continue to improve. In fact, your overall perceptions of yard waste removal services are up seven points. Residential garbage collection is up six points. Water service actually went up a little bit from last year. And your perceptions of customer service, which really shows how your employees and your processes of interacting with people are handled, went up a point from last year and is up four points from 2006. So hats off to your utility and your environmental services people. They're definitely doing something right to get these kind of ratings. In addition, when it comes to maintenance, which is another very important area to residents, you can see that the long-term rating for maintenance of streets is up from 57 to 63. We did see a slight decrease from last year in that and some of the other areas that were assessed in the survey. But if you look at the long-term trends, most of the long-term trends are generally positive or flat. But you will notice on maintenance of city buildings, we've seen a little bit of a stair step down. It hasn't dropped dramatically, but it's gone from 86 to 85 to 83. But we have seen some significant improvements in four, I guess, excuse me, five of the major areas that are assessed in this category since 2006. When it comes to parks and recreation, overall, in most areas, have seen significant improvement. The one area that's kind of had challenges, the bike lanes and paths, you can see a stair step down since 2006 from 58 to 54. Uh, but if you look at some of the areas related to programming, your adult athletic programming, the ease of registering for programmings, and even the fees that you charge for your recreation program, all of those areas have increased significantly from 2006. And most of the decreases from last year, which you can see again, weren't statistically significant. So we see some declines in the overall ratings. Most of those decreases from last year, this year, don't really concern me at this point because I'm going to show you in just a little bit how high your ratings continue to be compared to other parts of the country. The one area residents had some of the greatest concerns about when we first started doing the survey had to do with traffic flow. This is also one of the areas that sometimes the hardest to deal with, especially when you're a growing community like Auburn, you have new development coming in. Sometimes this is difficult to manage, but you'll notice that the overall perceptions from your residents show that you're doing a very good job, particularly when it comes to car related issues. You'll see perceptions of east-west travel in the city are up 12 percentage points since 2006. North-south travel is up uh, 9 percentage points. Pedestrian travel has also improved, though a little bit lower than last year. Bicycle travel has stayed about the same uh, since 2006. But the car issues are one of the things that we identified in previous surveys about being paramount concerns for people just to be able to get from one part of the city to another. You've done a great job at responding to those concerns. Now, you may wonder, well, how do you all stack up? You've seen some of the decreases from last year, most of which aren't significant, but how has that caused you to fare compared to other communities across the country? What I'd like to do is kind of start off with the high-level issues, which is how people rate the city as a live to work and raise children. What this chart shows you in blue are the results for Auburn. 
and then that wider reddish area is the U.S. average. And you'll notice that as I showed you before, though the work area declined a little bit and was rated lower than as a place to live and raise children, it's actually your competitive strength. You're rated 24 points above the national average now as people's rating the city as a place to work. Just a tremendous rating. It's very rare to get a rating that's 10% higher than the national average, let alone 20% higher. In this case, you're 24% above the national average as a place to work. When it comes to perceptions of the city, the two most important questions on the survey, for my opinion, when I assess the strategic health of a community are the overall quality of city services and the value that residents get for their local tax dollars. You'll see that you rate 27% above the national average in each area. What amazed me is that you rate 27% above the national average the year following a tax increase. Doesn't normally happen. I mean, it's very, very rare for me to get these kind of survey results after a city has raised taxes and see it perform this well. It really shows to me that you have a lot of confidence of the local residency and your ability to invest their resources in the places that they think are important. In fact, when you look at your track record of the priorities for the community over the past several years, and you look at your response to those concerns, your response has been aligned with the, the survey consistently identifies as those priorities, and I think that's why you have so much confidence in the public and you rate so well compared to other cities across the country. And this just kind of shows you the range. In the report, we, in addition to showing you to the national average, we actually picked about 30 cities that are comparable to Auburn, many of which have universities in them. And what this shows you on these charts is the lowest to best rated city in that peer group of about 30 communities. And you'll notice that you're right near the very top when it comes to the quality of city services and also with the overall value you receive for your tax dollars. So again, congratulations for earning the confidence of your community with regard to those two critical questions. When it comes to the delivery of major categories of city services, you'll see that the only area that you rate average in is management of traffic flow. All of the other major categories you rate significantly above the national average, and your employees are really to be commended for customer service. You must have a culture with your employees that just feeds people who are responsive to resident needs to get a rating that's 25% above the national average. And just put this in perspective, most communities, only about half the residents or 55% feel good or give positive ratings for the customer service they get from the local government. Here, eight out of 10 employees give positive ratings. So again, your employees are definitely doing something right. In addition, the way you communicate with the public, though that's something difficult to do, you rate 29 points above the national average in that area. It's easy for people to complain about communication. Probably yourself, you know, people don't communicate well. People always say those kinds of things. And it's reflected in the fact that fewer than half the people in most communities give positive ratings for communication, yet three out of four of your residents give you a rating of four or five on a five-point scale. Your streets, code enforcement, parks and recreation, public safety, and stormwater also rate significantly above the national average. When it comes to some of your specific public safety services, I won't read the list to you here, but a couple of things that stand out, particularly the strong ratings of your police department. You see overall perceptions of local police protection are 16 points above the national average, and the perceptions of the visibility of police, particularly in residential neighborhoods, is at 17% above the national average. One thing we've seen a strong correlation between police ratings and satisfaction ratings is oftentimes how well the local police department communicates and get, gets involved with the community. And I would suspect that your local police department is doing an excellent job of being integrated and involved in the community given the high ratings that were achieved in the survey. In addition, you see that ratings for safety are generally very high. Your downtown has one of the highest rated safety ratings in the entire country, with 88% of the people surveyed thinking that they're safe or very safe when they're in downtown Auburn. And this may not surprise you either, or maybe it will. Uh, we ask people to rate the leadership of the city. Uh, what you'll notice is in most communities, only about half the residents actually give positive ratings for their local leaders, whether it be staff with the manager, your appointed boards and commissions, and elected officials. Here in Auburn, three out of four, in fact, more than three out of four for the city manager, 74% for elected officials, and 69% for your appointed boards and commissions, 
feel very good about the leadership of each of your groups. And I think that's, again, a reflection of many years of making the right decisions, being responsive to residents. And I think that's one of the powers that this survey has for you is it allows you to balance what's important from special interests, but not let special interests derail other things that you may need to do in order to be responsive to the broader community's needs. And you can see this is that same chart, just the range. And you can see you have near the very top of the range of performance for all three levels of leadership that were assessed on the survey. Last couple things, as this is the city buildings should have been on. This is actually, I guess I had four versions of the presentation, so you're getting version, I think, 15. Sorry about that. But what you'll see on here, the city building is not on here. It rates about 11 points compared to the national average. And you can see most of the other areas that were assessed in maintenance are also significantly above the national average. And this is actually the chart that shows the city buildings, which is down here at the bottom at 83% compared to 72%. You can see your sidewalks, your street ratings, mowing and trimming of streets in public areas, and then the overall perception of cleanliness. All of those areas are double digits above the national average with regard to satisfaction. The last couple areas we looked at are parks and recreation. You'll see one of your real strengths in parks and recreation are your adult athletic programs. They rate 12 points above the national average, but you'll see comparatively, this is one of the few slides where you trail the national average. One is community recreation centers, which is 15 points below the national average. You can see the number of parks is eight points below the national average. Outside of those though, particularly on your programming side, you're really setting the standard in recreation. In code enforcement, though I mentioned before that we saw some decreases in a number of areas of code enforcement, you're still setting the standard when it comes to code enforcement, particularly with regard to cleanup of junk and debris. You're 30 points above the national average, which is, I think, your highest comparative benchmark in the study. And you see sign regulations at 8% above the national average. And then we get to communication. And you can see all four areas of communication are above the national average. But your availability of information about parks and recreation programs and services is one of the very best. And it probably complements the ratings you're getting for your parks and recreation programming. And it's probably hand in hand the fact that you keep people informed about what they're doing. They're coming and getting good programs. And as a result, both your programming areas and the ratings for communication of programs are all very high. And then the last one I'll share with you, as I mentioned before, is your utility environmental services was setting the standard back in uh, 2006. And you've continued to widen that, particularly when it comes to yard waste collection services you're 15 points above the national average. So I don't know what you do in that arena, but it's very difficult to get a double digit rate above the national average once it gets to be about 70 or 80%. You know, Typically when you're 10% above the national average at that level, it's pretty significant. You're 15 points above the national average with yard waste. And you can see garbage collections, 8%. You're at nine out of 10 people are giving positive ratings. Almost nobody on the survey was dissatisfied. So with all that good news and the fact that the city rates comparatively well, you may wonder, well, what are the priorities? You know, what are the issues that are really emerging? One of the things that we try to do is not only identify how satisfied residents are, but also how much they care about the different services. And the rationale there is if nobody's satisfied but nobody cares, people aren't going to notice any of your efforts in that area. However, if something's really important to people and they're not satisfied, your efforts are probably going to make a big difference when it comes to overall satisfaction with city services. Uh, with that in mind, the top rated areas when it comes to the overall categories of city services that were assessed, you see traffic flow was at the top of the list. It had the highest importance rating. It also had the lowest satisfaction rating, which is one of the reasons why if you talk about your improvements in traffic flow or let residents know that you're concerned about that, they're going to sense that the city leadership empathizes with their concern in that area. Maintenance of infrastructure, particularly streets, was second. The remaining items you can see are identified as medium priorities. And this essentially means that the city's priorities are pretty much in line with what residents' expectations are. And you're not going to gain or lose a lot of satisfaction in those areas likely over the next couple of years, given the relative importance and the current levels of satisfaction. But certainly with streets and traffic flow, those are two areas that residents will pay a lot of attention to. This is if you're a left brain learner. 
If you're more of a right brain learner and you like pictures, this is a similar set of information. But it shows from left to right is how important the item is. The things on the right are more important. Items on the left are less important. As you go from the bottom to top, this is the relative satisfaction level. And you'll notice that maintenance of streets and traffic flow, again, are in the bottom right quadrant. We see them both on the matrix. We also see them on the ratings, which is one of the reasons when we have two different methods of assessing it and we get the same result, we can conclude that those are the areas you'll have the greatest benefits if you invest or at least discuss what your improvements are going to be in those areas in the future. When it comes to public safety, uh, the only issue is the enforcements of speed limits in neighborhoods, but you can see it's almost a medium priority. It's dropped rather significantly over the years because you've seen about a 20-point improvement in the overall satisfaction rating. At one time, this was well over 0 0.20 with the rating, and we look at it in the matrix. You can see it's the one item that's pretty far down to the bottom right uh, for the opportunities for improvement quadrant. When it comes to code enforcement, uh, zoning regulations and erosion and sediment control are at the top of the list. We also saw those two items in the bottom right quadrant of the matrix, which is the reason that they've both been flagged. When it comes to utility environmental services, curbside recycling is the only item that's been identified. You can see it was the most important area for improvement. It also had the lowest satisfaction rating, which is why you also see curbside recycling kind of alone in the bottom right quadrant. The last couple areas we looked at are maintenance. You can see overall the city performs very well in most categories of maintenance, but the only major issue that stands out is continued maintenance of city streets. You can see again, it's the top priority. It was also the lowest rated item, which is the reason it's in the far right of the bottom right quadrant. And then the last area we looked at is parks and recreation. And you can see biking lanes and paths are at the top of the list. Walking trails and community recreation kind of round out the top three. And those items are also over at the bottom right quadrant. So I know that's a lot of information to go with quickly. One of the nice things that I had the opportunity to do today for this first time is actually give this presentation to a really wide audience of city staff. So rather than it just be a few directors, this room was full of city staff. So that way people at all levels will know this information and can impact how the services are delivered by people throughout the organization. The last couple of things I want to share with you are some of the new survey questions we asked this year that you may be interested in, one of which is areas where the city should concentrate its efforts, kind of which issues or topic areas. And you see school, not a real surprise. It's typically at the top of the list for most communities. You see followed by traffic management, police protection, and then zoning and land use and public transportation kind of round out the top five. But the traffic management, very consistent with the high priority that residents place on traffic flow that we saw in the main survey. When we ask residents whether or not they'd support a tax increase to fund the future expansion of the city's school system, this result really surprised me. <laughs> particularly because you have raised taxes within the last year. It's very unusual to ask this kind of question within the same year and have people actually be supportive. But what you'll notice is 62% of the respondents actually said they would be very or somewhat supportive. Uh, you had 28% who would not be supportive. This isn't a voter poll, so you've got to take that into consideration that people who turn out for elections aren't always the same cross-section as the general population, but it certainly does show that there is some support within the community to consider a tax increase if necessary uh, to support your school system. In addition, we asked people what type of tax they thought should be used to fund, and property taxes were picked by two out of three people, business license fees, and the other items kind of fall out there. So property tax, there's actually a level of support. We don't know how much. You know, there's a lot of things that go into these types of issues, but clearly there's some willingness in the community to consider that, and property taxes are probably the preferred uh, method. Last couple things we wanted to find out is just perceptions of growth. I know you typically, a lot of times, probably hear we're growing too fast, too slow, we need to do more, do less. Well, when you actually ask the residents, 58% of the people, or a little over half, actually think the growth is about right. It does lead too fast. You know, more people think too fast than too slow, but overall, majority still think you're growing about right. 
Uh, when we asked people whether or not they thought you were building sufficient infrastructure to kind of keep up with the city's growth, this might be an area for some education. You can see over a quarter of people just frankly didn't know. Of those with an opinion, it was 41% yes to 32% no. But this may be some opportunities for you, again, to educate people about what's being done so they're aware given the growth that's been taking place uh, in the community. The other thing we wanted to find out is given some of the concerns nationally about the economy and just development and those sorts of issues, what residents thought about the city's efforts to pursue commercial or industrial projects and how that level of effort should change. And you can see 46% or almost half of the people thought you should actually do more than you're doing now. Uh, a little over a third said it should stay about the same. Very few people thought it should be reduced. So again, I don't know where you're at in all these decisions, but there are some pretty clear indicators about the direction residents would like you to go. And then finally, we asked residents about the priority that should be placed on some specific projects. And you can see the items that rose to the top of the list, downtown parking, road resurfacing and re re reconstruction. You can see expanded police facilities and fire facilities sort of round out the top four. So if you're looking at where residents want to see resources invested, consistently you see near the top of the list are things related to traffic management and also uh, infrastructure, particularly related to streets, as you can see both in this chart and some of the previous charts that we've looked through. So just to summarize things, as I said, residents clearly have a very per positive perception of the city. The results of the mapping show that you're equitably delivering services throughout the city. Uh, the new finding we found this year is that your composite index. Uh, we've tracked this for many years, but you now have a tool for really assessing at an aggregate level overall how have things changed, and things are up 10 points compared to 2006, while the national average has dropped five points. Uh, you're clearly setting the standard. I think you should be really commended particularly for your customer service. You know, that's something that your employees bring to the table every single day, and they're certainly doing something to make the community feel good about the service they deliver. And the fact that you're 27 points above the national average for both the overall quality of your service and for the value of taxes, you're really to be commended for your performance overall at an aggregate level. While the results have decreased a little bit, at this point in time, I'm not really concerned about the decreases because I'm looking at your decreases relative to an entire nation of decreases. And so when you see 3 and 4% drops this year, uh, and I'm seeing them pretty much everywhere about that same level, I think some of the change in attitude here is just a function of what's going on nationally. So again, uh, I'd be happy to get any questions, but congratulations on a great year and uh, doing a super job at really responding uh, to resident concerns and managing you know, the tax issue very, very well.